Hey folks, hope everybody's doing good today. If you're like me, you're probably starting to get a little stir crazy from staying at home way too much and uh, looking for things to do. Uh, I've spent a whole lot of time up here in my, my workshop, kind of piddling around and uh, I make some furniture and things up here from time to time. This week Roxanne's been refinishing and repainting a, an old cabinet that's probably 70 or 80 years old and uh, getting ready to put in a new battery on my grandson's loader here so he'll be back on the road here before long but uh, last week I did a video that uh, hopefully uh, encouraged some folks uh, I know it encouraged me just uh, just doing it probably encouraged myself more than anyone else and I kind of felt led to do that again this week and just thinking about uh, where we are right now and, and these are some some strange times for sure. Uh, just uh, just today um, in the United States we've got over 215,000 uh, confirmed cases of COVID-19, over 5,000 deaths. Um, just in the past 24 hours we've had over 1,200 deaths uh, here in the United States uh, and so you know, 687 cases in Kentucky uh, and that number's uh, rising every day and, and those numbers can be scary. You know, they can uh, certainly cause us to worry and that's kind of what I talked about last week of, uh, of even though we, we live in some uh, some strange times and, and going through some worrisome things that uh, we don't have to give in to fear because because God is in control and we know that uh, as Christians we're uh, we're in his hands and uh, and everything sifts through his hands and so we can have uh, assurance even in the midst of, uh, of storms all around us and that's kind of what I want us to to look at today really quick and, and hopefully you'll get uh, some encouragement out of this as I did. Um, I want to look at Psalm 145 uh, at just the goodness and the greatness and, and the awesomeness of God. Uh, a few years ago I uh, did a sermon series uh, called Where the Rubber Meets the Road of, of just bowling down into six or seven things that are really the non-negotiables for Christianity. If, if you're trying to explain to somebody what Christianity is, uh, what are the things that, that, are, uh, that have to be included in that? Uh, and the first sermon that I did in that series was called God is Awesome. Uh, because that's, uh, the second one was called Man is a Mess. Uh, and basically you can put those together. God is awesome and we're not. Uh, but uh, it begins with God uh, and just the greatness of who He is. And so, uh, that's really what Psalm 145 tells us, and so I want that to be uh, a reminder to us today as we look at, uh, you know, our, our leaders in, in Frankfurt, leaders in Washington, tell us that the next two weeks are uh, they could get pretty tough. Um, uh, the, the words that they use the next two weeks could be uh, very painful, uh, and so now more than ever, I think we need God's word uh, to, to to remind us of the truths that we have, and so uh, even though we we throw that word awesome around to, de to describe everything from sports teams to french fries. Uh, only God is truly awesome. Uh, we praise Him because He uh, is a truly awesome God. One, one theologian said this, This is where most of us go astray. Our thoughts of God are not great enough. We fail to reckon with the reality of His limitless wisdom and power. Because we ourselves are limited and weak, we imagine that at some points God is too and find it hard to believe that He is not. We think of God as too much like we are. Put this mistake right, says God. Learn to acknowledge the full majesty of your incomparable God and Savior. And that's what Psalm 145 does here. It's a psalm of David, and it's a psalm of praise. And I want to read it to you, and then we'll look at, at what, we, what truths we can take from it. I will extol you, my God, O King, and I will bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you, and I will praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall praise your works to another, and shall declare your mighty acts. I will meditate on the glorious splendor of your majesty, and on your wondrous works. Men shall speak of the might of your awesome acts, and I will declare your greatness. They shall utter the memory of your great goodness, and I shall sing of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and great in mercy. The Lord is good to all, 
and His tender mercies are over all His works. All your works shall praise you, O Lord, and your saints shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and talk of your power to make known to the sons of men His mighty acts and the glorious majesty of His kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your dominion endures throughout all generations. The Lord upholds all who fall and raises up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look expectantly to you, and you give them food, their food in due season. You open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in all his ways, gracious in all his works. The Lord is near to all who call upon him, to all who call upon him in truth. He will fulfill the desires of those who fear him. He also will hear their cry and save them. The Lord preserves all who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord, and all flesh shall bless his holy name forever and ever. You know, as, as we look at that psalm, it's really clear that, that Psalm 145 was, was written for one purpose, and that was to praise God, to praise the greatness and the awesomeness of the Lord. You'll you, you real, realize that in there, there there's no request, Nowhere does it ask God for anything. Uh, there's no confession of sin uh, here to God. It's pure praise. Uh, nothing but praise to, to an awesome God. Listen to, listen to, to the psalmist as he, as he speaks to the Lord. He says, I will exalt you. I will praise you. I will extol your name. I will praise your name. David, David doesn't wait until, he's, until he gets to heaven to start praising God, but he, uh, he starts doing it now. He starts by expressing his praise to God every day. And it's a reminder to us that uh, that praising God is is one earthly thing that we do that, that we will do when we get to heaven as well. Uh, so we ought to start practicing now uh, and praise Him every day. Uh, but but the reality is, and, and and you see it all around you that that some Christians praise the Lord and some don't. Uh, and perhaps the difference is that believers who who praise the Lord have have their eyes fixed on Him, and while others look at uh, maybe look only at themselves, uh, but but here's the truth: when when God is the center of your life, uh, you can praise Him every day because you'll always find blessings, no matter how di difficult your circumstances are. When He's the center uh, of your praise and the center of your life, no matter how bad things get around you, uh, even as we see in these days, uh, that we can still praise Him for His goodness and His greatness uh, because He is an awesome God. Uh, so, so what is there, according to this psalm, what is there about, about our awesome God that, that motivated the, the psalmist to praise Him like this? He, he really found himself caught up in, in four different things here. First is this, God is truly great. Uh, we see this in, in verses 3 through 6. If God is God at all, if God is who He says He is, He has to be great. Uh, uh, people like to use the word great when, when speaking of themselves, but there's there's really not much about us. There's really not much about uh, sinful humans that, that's truly great. Uh, about the only thing God names about man that's great is his wickedness. You know, but, but how is God great? Well, he's, he's great in different ways. If you look at verse 3, he's, he's great in his person. He's great just in who he is. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised and his greatness is unsearchable. Uh, Augustine began his famous confessions with, with Psalm 145. Uh, verse 3 great is Jehovah he found himself lost really lost in, in the greatness of God and really the, the more that we learn about God and, and the deeper that uh, your relationship with him grows the, the greater you realize that he is uh, no one can, can measure or, or fully describe his greatness because it's beyond our comprehension it's, it's beyond our, uh, the words that we have to even say or understand uh, the apostle Paul knew God really probably better than, uh, than few others would ever know him. And, uh, and yet he had this to confess in Romans 11. He said, Oh, the depth of the riches of the wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable his judgments and his paths beyond tracing out. Now, so, so God is good in his person. He's, he's great in his person. Uh, and then God is great in his works. Verse 4, One generation shall praise your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts. You know, the history 
of the nation of Israel is, is really a, a record of the mighty acts of God. If you look all throughout the Old Testament, uh, it's this story of the mighty acts of God, the, uh, the call of Abraham, uh, the birth of Isaac, the, the exodus, uh, the wonders in the wilderness that, that we see Moses, that God works through Moses, the, the crossing of the Jordan and, and the conquest of the land, and uh, just the mighty acts of God in delivering His people and establishing this, uh, this kingdom. Uh, and so as this, as this psalm tells us, you know, how wonderful it is when one generation tells the next generation of the greatness of God's works. Uh, and, it re and it keeps before us uh, this fresh reminder of just who God is and how great He is, even in the midst of struggle, even in the midst of pain. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 17 says, For the Lord your God is God of gods and Lord of lords, the great God, mighty and awesome. You know, so we see in, in all of these verses, in all these cases, that God is truly great, which is the beginning of, of who He is as an awesome God. But secondly, God is truly good. Not only is He a great God, but He is, he is also a good God. And we should be thankful that, for that, that, that not only is He great, but He's good. Because greatness without goodness would make God some kind of selfish tyrant. And, and goodness without greatness would make Him you know, willing to help us uh, but without greatness, unable and capable of acting. But whatever God thinks or says or does or plans or accomplishes is good because He is good. Because God is good and we, and we can trust in that and have faith in that. He'll, he'll never will anything evil for us because, because as the Bible says, He's the, the giver of every good and perfect gift. Uh, in spite of the fact that there's evil in the world and, and and let's be honest, sometimes it, it seems like evil is winning when you look around. Uh, but the Psalms in another place, in Psalm 33, says the earth is full of the goodness of God. You know, if that weren't true, we really couldn't quote a verse like Romans 8.28 and really believe it. You know, that all uh, that, that things work for, for those who are called according to, to God, according to His purpose. You know, we really couldn't believe that. Uh, if we didn't know about the goodness of God. God's goodness is compassionate. Look at verse 8. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and great in mercy. You know, God is, is, is he's certainly not good to us because we deserve it. Uh, not because we've earned it, but, but He's good to us because He's merciful and He's compassionate. It's, it's when we realize this, uh, that He loves us and, and He's good to us despite how bad we can be despite the fact that we don't deserve it, uh, it's when we realize this that our hearts are, are really filled with praise to God. You know, who are we that, that, that He should be so good to us? Uh, pride is, pride is, is, is really the great enemy of praise. And you know, when we get this idea that, that we deserve God's blessing, that, that God should bless us, that, that we deserve His blessing, and uh, then we, we really end up only praising ourselves when we find ourselves unable to praise God. Uh, so if anything should, should lead uh, sinners like us to repentance, it's, it's, it's the goodness of God. We like to think it's, uh, we like to think it's the opposite, that, that it's the badness of man that makes people repent, but that's, that's not true. You think about Judas. Judas. Judas knew he was bad, but he didn't, it didn't turn him away from evil. Uh, but if you think about the prodigal son uh, in Jesus' parable, he, when he realizes how generous and good his father is, he repented and went home. He didn't repent because of his badness. He repented because of the goodness of his father. And so as we worship God and praise his goodness, uh, we should repent of our own sins and, and forsake them and leave them behind. You know, how, can we, how can we sin against such a good and generous God? You know, so God is, is he's truly great. God is truly good. Third, God rules in righteousness. Uh, we see this in verses 11 through 13. And uh, the em emphasis here is on God's kingdom and His, his righteous rule in this world. And, uh, and many people have this idea today, uh, probably particularly in these times, that, that, that God is not reigning, uh, that Satan is somehow in charge, and that, that, that God won't rule until Jesus returns. But that's... That's not biblically accurate because, because we know, because God's Word tells us that, that Jesus is on the throne. 
Jesus Christ is on the throne today and we need to keep in mind that, that, that Jesus is enthroned and he's, he's completely defeated all of our enemies. Uh, and we certainly can't understand all the complexities of, of God's work in this world. Uh, we certainly don't understand everything that we see happening around us right now. Uh, but we walk by faith and, and, and often our faith is, uh, is tested by events, uh, is tested by experiences that, that seem wrong. But we remind ourselves that, that, that God is on His throne. Even in the midst of a, a global pandemic where it seems like there's so little that we can do, we're reminded that God is in control. God is on His throne and He's working things out for, for our good. He's working things out for His glory. Uh, and, and so these are things that remind us of, of, of the awesomeness of our God. Why, why is God awesome? He's truly great. He's truly good. He rules in righteousness. And finally, number four, He is gracious. God is gracious. Uh, we see this in verses 14 through 20. He's, he's a great God on the throne, yet He's a God who is near us, uh, concerned about our needs. Our God is so great that, that He's high above us, and, and yet He's right here with us at the same time. And you know, we've all met someone who, who, who felt like they needed some kind of sign that God exists. You know, you might even be that person that, you know, well, I would believe in God if, if He would just give me some kind of sign. Uh, but in, in, in Psalm 145 here, and David points out that we have all the signs we'll ever need. That God has given us sign after sign after sign. And He, and he opens up this psalm with, with personal praise. I will exalt you. But then He closes it here uh, by asking every creature to praise God's holy name. All flesh shall bless His holy name forever and ever. Uh, and halfway through the psalm, in between those things, uh, He called on all of creation and all the saints to praise God because He is truly an awesome God. Uh, and let's continue. And I, I want that just to be, that's my encouragement to myself, that's my encouragement to you, is just uh, continually to offer praise uh, to, our, to our awesome God, particularly in, in painful times and uncertain times where we find ourselves now uh, this is when we should praise God all the more uh, uh, in remembering of, of who He is uh, and who we are in Christ. Uh, as the psalmist says, let every creature praise His holy name forever and ever. Uh, you know, I hope that's, a, I hope that's an encouragement to you. Uh, that's, uh, that psalm is, you know, times when you just feel uncertain about things or, or you know facing the things that we're facing now it's it's a good reminder uh, of who God is that he is contr in control that he is an, an awesome God and we can trust him and we can have uh, faith in him uh, last week I shared a song with you that uh, uh, that I thought really spoke to me at that time and, and I got a couple other songs just in thinking about this uh, obviously uh, the Rich Mullen song awesome God our God is an awesome God. Uh, there's a lot of different versions of that. Um, I made a, a, a little video of when I preached this sermon a few years ago. Uh, I made a lyric video that kind of went with that song, and I'm going to try to, uh, to upload it on Facebook. And I hope you'll take the time to, to watch it and just and, and worship, uh, thinking about the truths that are in that song. And then there's another song that's simply called My God is Awesome. Uh, and it's been recorded by uh, different folks. It's a, it's a gospel song. Uh, but just within that song, it talks about these different attributes of God, that, he, that He's mighty, that He's holy, that He's great, He's our deliverer, He's our provider, He's our protector. Uh, even in difficult times, even in uh, a global pandemic, even in the middle of COVID-19, uh, God is God, uh, and He's an awesome God. And so I'm going to... I uh, also made a lyric video for that um, for that service when I preached that sermon before. I'm going to try to upload those two to Facebook and, and hopefully they'll work. Uh, if not, you can look those up on YouTube. But uh, just be reminded in, in today and the days to come of uh, even as we see uh, maybe painful news, uh, maybe unsettling news, even disturbing news, uh, that, uh, that God... Uh, is who he says he is, that, that his word is true, uh, and that we have the promise in here that he is in control, that we serve an awesome God uh, who's truly great and he's truly good, uh, and he loves us. Uh, 
and I just hope this has been an encouragement to you.